Hi guys, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about my two new Cattleya type orchids and we're also going to do a repotting. You're going to need bark. I finally found my secateurs. Uh, I need this. Alcohol of course to disinfect and two pots. So th these plants are also from Plantea orchids. I've like talked about them quite a lot. And um, as you guys can see, I have like neglected to actually repot them because they're actually extremely tightly packed in this pot. And you can see that like, the roots are coming through the pot and pot. So I do feel kind of bad about that, but you know, life happens, you know, and you can't always be on top of everything. But yeah, so we can see today what we can do. I just think this is the first time I've um, I've repotted a, a Cattleya orchid on my channel. So these orchids are put in. Um, well, but the other thing I want to talk about, of course, is also like their names. Like they are R C L um, Su Young Green Dragon King, which is a fragrant. Um, plant with like greenish like flowers and the other one is RCL Helen Brown Napoleon which is also a, a fragrant plant so it's interesting to see when they flower what the flowers will look like so first thing of course is to get this um, as you guys now always keep the labels safe over there um, so get this plant out of the spots. So the best time really, if you want to replant your, um, or repot your um, Cattleya orchids is as soon as they start making new growth. Because then you know that the plant will be making new roots to go into the new growing medium. Because the last thing that you really want is to have a plant that's simply sitting uh, on top, oh, I'm breaking the roots, I'm crying for this plant. Um, that last thing that you want is a plant that's simply sitting on top of the media and doesn't have any active roots. So as you guys can see, it has a very healthy root ball actually with very few dying roots. So it's been interesting now. And so it's also very tightly packed. So somehow I'm now gonna have to get some of the sphagnum moss out of here without damaging the um, new roots too much. Uh, I'm not actually personally a big fan of using sphagnum moss on cattleya orchids or, or indeed on like any orchids um, because it, it breaks down and the whole picture becomes a uh, acidic as as well as it starts to compact around the plant um, and then you have problems with evaporation and the medium becomes too um, tightly port a lot so I'm just gonna see if I can get some of this out of here I'm not gonna be able to get all of this out um, so then when I, when I repot the plant again um, I'll see if I can get some more out because it's going to be, I'm going to have to unpick the whole plant, but basically. Um, I really don't want to damage any of these roots. So I think it's like, here's me actually, to like get this plant into a new pot. And as the new roots um, go into the new growing media, it'll be a lot easier to get this old media out of it, but at least then I'll have some vibration around my orchid. So I think we can start with that. I'll use this pot. It's just normal like clay pot, which I use, which I use for all my orchids. I prefer to have clay pots um, because I find the plastic pots can stay to wait for too long. Um, 
Uh, so I can just take it. Some of these old roots I'm gonna have to definitely cut off. So I just take my secateurs. Alcohol, spruce with alcohol. And, and this is just the old dead roots, which I'm taking off this way. That like grow near to the top of the plant. Um, I'm a huge like fan of Cattleya orchids because I think that their flowers are just so nice and they're also some of the orchids that, that I found have the best, you know, like fragrance. Um, all Cattleya orchids are native to uh, South America. So they come from countries like Ecuador and Brazil. Um, I'm not sure if, if like, any come from Argentina actually. Okay. There we go, make some, some progress. And I think as the root breaks, it is l l likely to actually split and form two roots. Okay, I think that's been enough. Also, just to fill up from the bottom, and this is just normal pine bark, like like a medium grade. Um, see what we have. That looks fine. And this plant also has beautiful new. Um, like growth coming out in two, so there's two leads. So hopefully that will translate into two flowers. Um, and I also always like to break off all of these dead, um, I don't know what you call this, because this is the ideal place for pests like, like the scale and mealybug to hide behind and go unchecked or unnoticed. But just as a general rule, I like to take all that off. So if the plant is nicely positioned at the back, so I always try and, and position my plants as, as far to the back so, so the oldest part of the plant is here and it grows out across the pot. Okay, now I'm just gonna tease in some bark chips along the side to keep it stable but at least now I know that the plant is able to grow into new fresh media um, even though there is still some sparkling moss left in there as you know some people will will tell you, you know, to take out all the sphagnum moss and to unpack all the old media. But I mean, if it's not gonna, it gonna work for you and your plant at that stage, then you don't really have to do it. It's not something that you have to do to the detriment of your plant, you know? Um, when I repot this plant again, I can then focus on, um, and like getting all the old media out of its root ball. So I think I've packed in enough on the side. That plant looks nice and stable. There we go. So this is the one. And I must always remember tag. So. Tag is in, I know exactly which one that is, but there. The second one is the Allen Brown Napoleon. Same thing really. And what I love about this plant is just how beautiful um, like the leaves are. It has such big um, leaves. I haven't seen leaves the size on a cattleya. Um, 
also has a nice root ball, but also tightly packed with like sphagnum moss. Um, so I'm also not gonna. It's the same. It's the same ring, thing, really, like the other plant. I'm just gonna trim some of these dead roots away. And I'm sure that you, that you guys have haven't noticed that I'm not at my usual filming spots. I'm here on, on like a friend's balcony. I thought it'd be nice to get away a bit and and be new surroundings. Okay, so these are all old roots. Which I'll take off now and see if I can get more of the sphagnum moss out of here. But if not, we'll have to stay in there for now until I repot this plant again. But first thing, very importantly, this is alcohol because you're working between plants. Spread with alcohol. And now you can cut. Because the last thing that you want to do transfer any viral infections between your plants. So again I'm just targeting the older roots um, that look shriveled and dead. Oh, that tumbling off there. Yeah it's fine. Also look there's a new growth point coming out there. And also one I can see here beneath the sheath. Yeah, I'm really excited for these plants to flower. Because I've heard that the fragrance is amazing. Yeah, let's just put this. And just remove some of these old weeds that come. Okay. So this is small part. And I mean, I'm sure that you guys, if you grow orchids now by now, that you use the smallest part possible for your orchid. Because you don't want your orchids to be overpotted and in media that the plant is not going to use. Because it will keep the, the roots too damp for too long. So, now we position this plant in. So now it has like a nice enough space for the new growth to kind of grow outwards. You can see it has been in that pot quite long because like the, like the roots have gone around and around and around, um, around the, the rim of the pot. But hopefully now they'll be able to go straight down into the media. So position it in and start filling in around the sides. Oh, putting the plant to the side. So I'm thinking that's almost enough. Just see if you can get a few more pieces just to like fill in any air pockets. Yeah, because I don't want any air pockets to be around your roots. Although I don't think it will do any harm really because orchids do have to have air around the roots. So. But air pockets could be somewhere that like pests could hide. Like snails. Um. But that's why I try to keep my like the orchids I have that are inside stay inside and my orchids that are outside stay outside. 
so that you don't bring anything else inside when you bring your plants in. Okay, I think that one's in, so I'm just gonna put this under the sink. Tag. So I'll just put these under the sink and, and get them nice and set so they can settle into their new pots. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video um, and found it and found it useful. So please like and subscribe if you did.